Last week, Oculus released a new feature that lets its player replicate his hand in VR without any controller, the hand tracking. And here we are now, one week later, and the SDK just came out today. So in this video, I will show you how to set up hand tracking in Unity and use it to interact with an object. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. Okay, so I'm here inside an empty Unity project and before using the end tracking, we have some setup to do. First, we have to obviously download the last version of the Oculus integration package that you can find on the asset store and that I've already imported in my project here. Next, as the end tracking currently only works with the Quest, we need to build our game to this headset. So one way to do it would be to plug a USB-C cable and use the Oculus link uh, to directly test our game by just pressing the play button on here. However, end tracking is currently not working with the Oculus Link. Maybe that's an improvement that they will make in the future, but for now, let's do it in the old-fashioned way by exporting the game. And for this, I actually have made a tutorial that will guide you step by step to do this. And if you have already made what I've shown in this tutorial, we have only four things to do here. First, go in File, Build Setting, select the Android platform and click here on Switch platform. Next, click on Player Setting here, go to the X are setting and make sure to enable VR and to add the Oculus SDK as a virtual reality SDK. Finally, we can go above on the other settings, remove the Vulkan API from the graphics API and finally go here and set the minimum API level to 4.4 KitKat. And here we go, now that was the boring part of the video, I'm glad you are still there. Now let's get started with the hand tracking. Okay, so in the sample scene, the first thing I'm going to do is create a white ground by right clicking in the VR key, 3D object plane. We can rename it ground and make sure that the position is 0, 0, 0. Okay, now let's remove the main camera and instead we will add the OVR camera rig, so the basic camera setup for using an Oculus device that we can search here in the project window. And now we can finally drag it in the VR key to add it in our scene. So right away I will set its tracking origin type to floor level so that it will take into account the height of the player. And now if you are familiar with the previous version of the Oculus integration, this is where things are different. First, make sure that the target device is set to quest, which should be the case by default. And now we can activate end tracking here by setting the end tracking support to either ends only or controller and ends. And in my case I will set it to ends only and basically if you have led it to controller only here an error would pop up when you start the application telling you that end tracking is not supported on the app and uh, preventing you to continue. Okay so this was the part for the camera setup now to show the hands I will need to search for the hands prefab and add it in my scene and here we go now let's save go in the file build settings make sure that the simple scene is in the build by clicking here on on add open scene and finally click on build and run. Now the application will compile and if it says that it couldn't find any device to build, it either means that you have not plugged correctly your Oculus Quest or that it is not set to developer mode. And there you have it, the application is finally exported on our quest. Now make sure that the end tracking is activated and at the moment you can do it by going here in settings, experimental features and checking the hand tracking. And now we can go back in our library, unknown source, to launch back the game. As you can see, everything works fine, I'm able to see my hands and the end tracking works really well, I can move any finger and it will follow it. I would say that in my opinion, it even works better than in the Oculus menu. Okay, and one more important note here is that you can change the visual mode of our hand. So if we go back to Unity, you can see that I can set it to either skeleton, both or max. Okay, so now that we succeeded to set up the end tracking, let's use it to interact with an object. To interact with an object, the Oculus integration comes with some tools to help you. So I will first search in my project for interactable tools SDK driver and drag this prefab in my scene. So so what this prefab does is collecting different tools to interact with an object. So as you can see, for both ends, we have a ray here for interactive with objects that are far from us and the fingertip tool on the index. 
mistakes. So if you're feeling adventurous, you can go ahead and have a look at the script to make your own tool. Also, if we click on the fingertip tool, you can see that there are already some other interaction made for the other fingers. So in my case, I will drag the fingertip tool for the right and middle finger. We can already test what we've done here by exporting the game again. And there you have it. You can see that I have some blue beam coming out of my hands and that is actually the ray tool. And if we look at the tip of my finger, you can see that I have a little sphere to interact with objects. Now let's go back to Unity for the next step. Okay, so the next step is to create an object to interact with. So for this, I will go here in the hierarchy and create a 3D cube, scale it down to 0.2 0 .2. 0 .2, 0 0.2 and place it in front of the OVR camera rig. Now perfect. Now on this cube I will add a new component called button controller and what this script does is trigger some function when we interact with this game object and as you can see it actually needs three more game objects that define the proximity zone, the contact zone and the action zone. So for this I will create uh, three more cube as a child of this game object that I will rename button proximity, button contact and button action. So on each of them I will add a button trigger zone and set the parent interactable object to be the parent cube. Now we can set their collider to trigger and drag them in the appropriate viable slot on the button controller component. Okay, now that they are set up, we can scale them as we want. So in my case, the proximity button needs to trigger first. So I will scale it a bit bigger than the other two. Then I will leave the contact like this and maybe scale the action down so that the player will need to reach it uh, with its finger. Now we don't want these trigger zone to have a visual. So I will just uncheck their mesh renderer. Okay, perfect. Now the rest of the variable of the button controller script are there to check all we can interact with it. So in the contact test, we can add both the backward press and the purple test. So the purple test check that the tool is pointing towards the button and the backward test check if we are entering correctly the zone of the button. Finally, we can set the center of the button to be the cube itself. And now the next parameter is there if you want to only trigger the button when it is facing a particular direction. But in my case, I will leave unchecked this parameter. And here you go, now our button is ready to be used. And to show you an example on how to use it, let's create a new component called button listener. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do in this script is add using Oculus Sample Framework here at the top of the script. And I will also add using Unity Engine.Events. Now with this, I can create four Unity events viable for each state of the button. The proximity event, the contact event, the action event, and finally the default event. Next, we want to set up the event of this button at the start of the game. So in the start function, I will first search for the button controller with a get component and call interactable state change dot add listener initiate event. And now what's left to do is create the initiate event function. So in this function that needs to take as an argument an interactable state args, I will check the current state of the button with state dot new interactable state. And if it's the proximity state, I will trigger the proximity event. If it's the contact state, the contact event. If it's the action state, the action event. And you guessed it, if it's the default state, the default event. And I hope you are still following me right now because we are almost done with our interactable button. Now what's left to do is add the event that we want to trigger. So let's go back here inside Unity. So what I'm going to do is use these two materials that I have here in my scene and change the material of the cube to red with the proximity event, to blue when we contact with the cube, and finally make the button disappear when it reaches its action. Also, we can set the button color back to the default one when we are in the default state. Now let's save and export our game to test it with the Oculus Quest. 
And there you have it, you can see that I can now interact with the button. So for example, when I enter the proximity zone with either my right index tip or the right middle tip, the object turns to red, now when we collide with it, it turns to blue. And finally, as you can see, when I reach the action zone, the button disappears. Awesome! And obviously you can use this for way more than a button. Okay, so this was for the proximity tool, but remember that I said earlier that there was a way to interact with objects that are far from us and to reward you for seeing till this part of the video I will show it now anyway let's go back to unity okay so to make an object interactable with the ray this is indeed really really simple I will first duplicate the button scale it a bit bigger and finally place it away from the player and basically that's it we can force the button to only use the ray tool here in the valid tool tags by only enabling the ray but that is all that is required to do to interact with it now let's duplicate this big button a bit and finally i think we are ready to export and test our game and here you go, now more than a little cube that we can interact with our finger. You can see that I can now point my hands toward the other cube and the ray will trigger the event. However, you can see that the proximity event is not triggered. I don't know if it's a bug or no, but be careful with this. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, you know how it goes. You can leave a like and a comment below so that the video will be promoted by YouTube to other VR developers like you. Also, I have an amazing use we have reached our second goal on Patreon, so a big thank you to all of you and the name of this week's new Patreon we appear here at the top right corner of the screen. And if like them you want to have access to the source code of all of my tutorials and exclusive content, join us. The link is in the description below.